this quarter, we made history at the C-Band auction. As Hans and team explained, our 5G built right strategy is now supercharged. We get to do what no one else can, make our transformational 5G ultra wideband available on a massive scale. Our network and technology team continues to extend our leadership. We turned on 16 more 5G home cities to bring our total to 30 and counting. Expanded 5G ultra wideband to Colorado Springs, Columbia, South Carolina, Knoxville, Sacramento, Seattle, and Pensacola. And for the inauguration and the big game, we did the critical behind the scenes work we always do. Our tech team in partnership with HR continue to develop new tools and training to power new ways of working. And in the first root metric study, including 5G nationwide, we ranked highest for overall network performance, continuing our string of America's best and most reliable for the 15th time in a row. Verizon Business continue to win accolades and customers. We introduced Verizon Frontline, advanced network and technology specifically for first responders. We continued our commitment to small businesses with the Verizon Big Concert for Small Business and launched the Complete Business Bundle, which provides plug and play internet, desk phone and security solutions with 24 seven tech support. Along with Deloitte and SAP, we unveiled a new 5G and edge compute solution for retail. We announced three new SD-WAN managed service offerings with Cisco, and among many deals, we struck a big one with Hub to bring managed network services to more than 450 offices throughout the US and Canada. Our consumer team kept the doors open nationwide, continuing to offer that personalized expert care. We unpacked the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G series, we continue to give our customers more choice to fit their unique needs, offering prepaid customers 5G with a new unlimited plan, launching a new unlimited cloud plan for a one-stop solution no one else has. And with Discovery Plus, giving customers even more amazing content choices. We had the most first quarter Fios internet ads since 2015. We launched Fios Forward, making high-speed internet with no data cap more affordable to those who need it most. And we continue to share our kindness campaign, generating more buzz and lots more love. Verizon Media delivered its second straight quarter of double-digit growth. Demand-side platform advertising grew, with connected TV and digital out-of-home experiencing especially strong growth. Consumer commerce, subscription products, and Yahoo Finance Premium all saw exponential growth. Sports betting saw a whopping over 3,000% increase on our platform. Yahoo Fantasy Sports launched Draft Together. We took center stage with the launch of Yahoo Plus subscriptions, Yahoo Shops Marketplace, and a redesign of Yahoo's homepage to enable customization. All consumer properties became 100% closed captioning accessible, and we made a $5 million ad inventory donation to help organizations advocate for accessibility. We launched a mental health directory toolbar powered by Therapy Den on Yahoo Life. We continue to grow our V-Team culture. We introduce WorkFor to transform how, where, and when we work to create even more engaging employee experience. We continue to help women navigate the pandemic impact through Women Collab, Women Own Wednesday, and declaring that we are not done when it comes to gender equality. With our Look Forward study, we shared how Americans are adapting to the pandemic and beyond. Hans and the V team stood up against attacks on the Asian community. We honored Black History Month, Women's History Month, and International Women's Day. And we keep earning recognition as one of the best places to work anywhere. Hello, all V-teamers. Uh, we are here in the auditorium in Basking Ridge and the, doing this up to speed live, talking about the first quarter. But let me start by talking about the murder of George Floyd before we come in to the first quarter. Uh, first of June uh, last year, uh, I shared my thoughts around the murder of George Floyd. Uh, it was one of the toughest and hardest speeches I've done in my life. But it's nothing compared to the, the, the pain and the racial injustice that millions of people are facing uh, every day around the world. And I think that with the verdict from yesterday in the George Floyd uh, trial, it's a moment in time. 
but it's so much more to be done. And uh, as I said all, all along, that during the COVID-19 and uh, everything that happened in racial injustice, uh, the whole society increased the bar for what we need to do and the actions we need to take. And I'm really proud for the V-teamers that have been working relentlessly this year to open discussion, taking actions for we, for us to be an even better company. Not saying that we're done. We just need to continue with the work because diversity and inclusion uh, for everyone in our company is such a strength. And it's really making a difference for us as a company and how we reflect the society in general. And we create the networks that move the world forward. And of course, that's for everyone. And that's so important to mention a day like this. So our work together with the ERGs, with all the V-teamers on diversity and inclusion will just continue and encourage you to continue to do that conversation in between all of you in the groups and with management uh, in order to progress this work because it's so important for our company. Talking a little bit about the first quarter, uh, as you saw on the video, I sometimes I just get sort of caught in a, a, a big surprise how much we're doing in a quarter, how many things this organization are doing at the same time. And I remember, even though it was a long time ago, we had a kickoff in the beginning of the year, and I used three words, growth, growth, growth. This was the year of growth, and uh, clearly, I can tell you our three business units have delivered on in this quarter. This quarter, we had Verizon Consumer Group, Verizon Business Group, and Verizon Media Group, all three of them growing. And not only that, they're also followed with a greater and grow, a great and good growth on our earnings as well as our cash flow. Matt will talk more about the financials later on, but clearly we are nailing on the strategy. And as I told the market today, our strategy is working. This is really what is happening. Our strategy, our execution is working, and it's so important to keep this momentum as we have laid out now the growth trajectory for the, that we want to have the years to come, and that will make a meaningful impact for our company, for our shareholders, for our employees, uh, and for the society at large, and of course for our consumers. We're starting to feel a little bit of great sentiment, you know. You see a co consumer sentiment improving. Uh, we saw more uh, good, good growth in our, in, our, uh, in our retail in the month of March. We see vaccinations coming up. Uh, we see economy, economic recovery. I just need to tell all of us, we still are in COVID-19. And there are people all around the world and here in the US that are dying from this uh, awful uh, disease that is uh, running around the world. So I just caution you again, don't forget that when you see and hear everything around you. All the things we've talked about, that how we need to protect ourselves, how we need to work in retail, in field, uh, and how we do in our daily life, just continues. A couple of other things that I'm thinking about in the quarter because of so much. I mean, if I think about the Verizon Consumer Group, good growth had a little bit tough start in the quarter because many stores were still closed due to COVID-19, came back in full force at the end of the quarter, continue with the value proposition with mix and match, Discovery Plus come in, not only that, the new offering coming out. We had a good momentum in the, in, in, in the month of March now coming into the second quarter. I'm really looking forward and being excited to see what we can do there. On the Verizon Business Group, I said, they are growing as well. They, of course, have some areas that still are a little bit uh, tough. I mean, as, uh, the small and medium businesses still have a tough time. We had a small growth in that business right now, but still, th that's a vulnerable group in, in our society at the moment. On the other hand, we saw so many great things coming out and partnerships and new products coming out on the mobile edge compute, partners and more extensive work with Amazon and all of that, and we're just paving the way to be a stronger company and building that scalability on platforms that we really need in, in Verizon Business Group as well, which is part of Tammy and her team's transformation plans. 
And finally, Verizon Media Group. Yeah, second quarter of a double digit growth. That's great. This has been a long journey, starting from the beginning when we changed the business plan and we're actually starting to build new products and a new business plan at the end of 2018. And then taking out cost to be more efficient. And here we stand right now with product that people like more and more. And we have an advertising platform that we have brought together. Uh, and a lot of new stuff coming out there. So all business units have so many things to say, uh, but these are the highlights for me. And finally, of course, GMT. Uh, they have not only delivered a lot of equipment and installed a lot of equipment this, this quarter, they also maintain the best network, which is a tough, you know, everybody wants to compete with us, but our engineers are doing a, a fantastic work. And we started the C-band. Remember, it's only six weeks ago since we could talk about the C-band and actually involve everyone. What has happened? We have now new agreements with our tower companies. Uh, we, are, we have ordered more than 50% of all the equipment we need for the uh, 7 to 8,000 towers we're going to do on C-band this year. Not only that, uh, we also uh, are, are working very hard with our satellite companies to clear the first trans or spectrum. A lot of things are happening. At the same time, we're building more networks than ever. Uh, you saw on the video here how many new cities we have launched on mobility, 5G home, and 5G internet. 5G internet is, is sort of the fixed wireless access in our business group. All of that has just come out in this quarter. Finally, rounding it up for me, uh, we always discuss how we're doing with employees. Remember, we had our Pulse survey, which I'm so proud of in the quarter, with the highest uh, participation ever, and, and good results. Still more to do. And then on the society, uh, early this week, for example, we, we, we launched our ESG report, which is, of course, our society report, how we stand up and how we work with that. And I'm really proud of what we have done the last 12 months in that area as well. And remember, we have a strategy that actually is covering the four stakeholders. And we have no source for all four of them. And I conclude the first quarter. We're actually delivering the progress that I'm expecting on all of them. There's more to be done. <laughs> we have a long year and a lot of targets that we want to achieve this year. So with that, I will not uh, uh, dwell more on the first quarter, more than thanking all the V-teamers for the great work, and that I can tell the market that our strategy is working. That's important, and we see it, our growth coming with the things that we now have developed since the Verizon 2.0 uh, sort of was established uh, for two and a half years ago, whatever it might be. Sometimes I forget uh, how long time or how short time it was since we launched it. So by that, I hand over to our famous star, the host, Andy. So what do you say? Uh, first of all, Hans, it's good to be with you here in Basking Ridge yeah, uh, with our good. leaders. It's good to see you. Uh, and, and first and foremost, of course, uh, thank you uh, for acknowledging uh, yesterday's verdict and really uh, uh, paving the way here for all of us to continue to heal. Uh, it's a time for all of us, as you mentioned, to grow. But uh, in growth, there's uh, healing, there's resilience. So thank you so much. Uh, it, is, it is great to be with you. Uh, and as we think about our first quarter results, uh, we do want to make sure uh, that this earnings webcast is it's, it's for you and it's, and it's driven by you. Uh, there, there'll be plenty of Q&A time. So really inviting all of you uh, to go on to slido.com, use the keyword Verizon, and we are looking for your questions. And we will make sure, and I'm, I'm looking at the, the Q&A right now. So go ahead and jump into Slido and make sure uh, that your questions are in there. We've got, uh, as you can see, uh, a room full of our leaders here. We're, we're, all, dist we're all socially distanced. We're being safe. Uh, but it, the energy here is palpable. Uh, so we're looking forward to connecting with you and making sure that your questions are answered. So um, as I take a look at the questions coming in, I'm going to hand it on over to Matt to talk about the financials. Uh, Matt, it's good to be with you, sir. Good to be with you. Good to be with everyone here. So um, wouldn't it be uh, one of these uh, presentations if I didn't say results matter? And, uh, you know, we delivered on that in the first quarter. We had a very good set of results here, a great way to start the year and a good platform uh, to build upon. So if we look at the numbers that we actually discussed this morning and to start with the top line revenue, Hans mentioned the growth across all three of our businesses. And it's worth mentioning that since we put the new organization structure, structure together as part of Verizon 2.0, we haven't had the opportunity to say all three businesses had revenue growth in the same quarter. 
So that's a fantastic place to be. Obviously, a lot of good work has gone in over a number of years, not just the first quarter, to make that happen. But it's fantastic to be able to say that 4% growth at the top line. Hans mentioned some of the, uh, the individual business unit numbers, but within there, wireless service revenue growth across both consumer and business up 2.4%. That was an increase in the rate of growth on the fourth quarter when it was up 2.2%. So not just growth, but showing the trend moving in the right direction, uh, which is very important. Great to see that. On top of the service revenue growing in wireless, we also had a rebound in the equipment volumes. You think about March of last year, we were starting to see the, the first impacts in the business from the pandemic. Uh, saw a much stronger March of this year uh, and really good momentum as we head into the second quarter. So that helped there. And obviously all the strong work the teams are doing with our customers and why they should be on the Verizon network. Uh, within Fios, we saw 2.5% saw growth within Fios revenues. We've had three quarters in a row now of really strong volumes. Our base of customers on Fios internet is now more than 5% higher than it was last year. Right? So you're starting to see that come through. And, and as I say, three quarters in a row of really good volumes. The uh, first quarter number, the best first quarter in Fios across the business for over six years from a volume standpoint. So Fios Internet really doing well, helping drive the top line. And then as Hans mentioned, the second quarter in a row of not just growth within Verizon Media Group, but double digit growth. Right? And that's a fantastic story to be able to tell. So all parts of the business contributing to that 4% top line growth. EBITDA, 2% growth there, so revenue starting to help the, the EBITDA. And that EBITDA also included the impact of the Jetpack recall that we had uh, a few weeks ago as well. So the earnings coming through with that, and you see at the bottom line, the adjusted earnings per share up 4%. So 4% revenue growth and 4% earnings per share growth, that's a good way to start the year. And then when you have revenue growth, you have earnings growth, you get a benefit in cash flow as well. In addition to the earnings, our capital spending was a little lower than it was in first quarter last year. That's just timing uh, and a lot of activity starting to get underway. We also mentioned this morning, we had the first little bit of spending on C-band come through right at the end of the, the first quarter. I'm sure that's gonna be a much larger number as we get into the second quarter with everything the team's doing. Amazing the progress that we've made in just the six weeks since we came out of the auction and where we are today. So that adds up to a uh, very strong free cash flow. You can see that number there up significantly year over year. It's a great way to start the year with results such as these. So then in addition to the results, a couple of other things. We obviously spoke in mid-March at the end of the auction about what we did there and everything else. The team did a fantastic job in the auction. And then after that, we went out and we had to, we had to pay for it. And um, within... Uh, Within six days after the, uh, the investor day, we went to five markets, raised $31 billion, had the largest ever order book in the US bond market, over $115 billion of demand uh, that we, we raised $25 billion in the US uh, market based off of. So just a fantastic job by everyone involved in that. And in addition to that, as we did that, we also supported diversity and inclusion firms. You heard more about that on Up to Speed on Monday with our treasury team and a couple of our banking partners partners there uh, as we did that. So great effort there. The other thing I wanted to talk about in the quarter was we hit our $10 billion uh, cost savings target. Right? We said at the start of 2018, over the next four years, we wanted to take out $10 billion of cash expense on a cumulative basis. And we wanted to do that by the end of 2021. We got there three quarters early. And uh, that doesn't surprise me at all, because when you think about the Verizon team, when you give us a target and we put all of you in for, uh, to go achieve that target, we execute. That's what we do. And this goal was just like everything else we do. So thank you for all the efforts that went into that. Now, you know I'm going to say this. We're not done with cost savings, right? Just because we've hit that goal doesn't mean we don't need to keep doing that. We continuously have to find ways to make our operations more efficient. And we do that so we can invest in the next generation technology, in the products and services we want to be able to give to our customers and make sure we have the best cost profile in the industry so that we can do those things. We'll continue to focus on cost reduction, but you do that every day. And I'm sure we'll continue to see the benefits come through. So all in all, 
this, is a, this was a good start to the year, a good quarter financially. It gives us a really strong foundation for the rest of the year. And all I'd say, let's build off of it. Let's drive the growth. You heard Hans talk about that earlier. Let's keep making sure we've got those volumes coming in the door. We're bringing more and more customers on. We know we have the best network. Let's make sure every customer is getting to experience that. When we bring more customers on, the financials will look good as well. So with that, Andy. Back to you. All right, Matt, thank you very much. And as you said, results matter and that growth continues. And it's, it's great to feel that, that pride from all of us here on the V team. Uh, so as we turn now to thinking about how we're taking care of business, uh, we have a fantastic panel for you. Uh, and uh, it is titled Taking Care of Business. And with that, uh, our colleague uh, Diana Alviar is taking care of business on this panel with some great guests. So with that, uh, Diana, take it away. Well, today I'm joined by a panel of V-teamers who are here to tell us how we are showing up for our customers in spite of a pandemic, how we did the critical work of keeping the doors open, putting those safety protocols in place and taking care of their needs. We're also talking about how we helped open doors for our friends in the business world and around the world. And this panel in particular is called Taking Care of Business with an emphasis on care. So for that, I'm going to go to our panel now, and I'm joined by friends from the retail team, the business group, our marketing team, and our communications team. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to start with you, Louis Cruz, and can you please tell me how we showed up for our small to medium-sized businesses? Thank you, Diana. Thank you very much. So the way we showed up for our customers was as one cohesive team. And I look at a customer like RLS, who in October, they divested from GE and they had six months to stand up their business. First thing we did was engage our wireline partners, Scott Lerner and Christine Wall, looking at getting circuits out to all of their locations that they had across the country. This has generated over $1.6 million in wireline bookings and continues to grow. That then resulted in a reverse lead, which continues to grow with that customer. Now we have over 400 smartphones with them, 50 Blue Jeans licenses so they can communicate and handle all of their HR interviewing process over the Blue Jeans platform. And every single one of their locations has wireless backup. So what started off as a customer inquiring about the possibility of a 300 line transfer of liability turned into uncovering what the customer's needs were, making the right connections and showing up as one company to bring another happy customer into the portfolio. Not only satisfy, but you help them survive. Our thanks to you and the rest of the business team. Now, one of the things that we're all missing so much is those live experiences, those football games and those concerts. We haven't been able to do that and really get together to celebrate things in the moment. And it's something that we're looking forward to. So joining me now is Christina Hall. And Christina, tell us a little bit about what your team is planning and how 5G ultra wideband plays a huge role in this. Thank you, Diana. So, you know, with the speed of vaccine deployment, what we are hearing from our sports and entertainment partners is that they will be back to full or near capacity at the end, at the second half of this year. Um, so when I think about a true showcase of the power of 5G ultra wideband and what it will enable, I think about these venues where 10,000, 40,000, even 80,000 customers and fans will all be together experiencing live events in ways they could never have imagined. Whether it's through enhanced fan experiences like augmented reality or uh, through real-time analytics or even multi-view camera angles or through the speed and safety of contactless entry, purchases, or enhanced wayfinding or through the single most important fan behavior sharing all those thousands of fans together, being able to text, share, stream, even video call, all with virtually no lag or disruption due to the capacity and speed of our 5G ultra wideband. That's what makes me excited and I can't wait. I know, it's so nice to be hopeful about the future, but it's also really important to reflect on how far we've come and how we've been there for our communities. and. For that, I'm turning to my friend, Marie McGahey, whose team has just done incredible work in this area. So Marie, one of the tragic things about this pandemic is how it has affected women. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how Verizon is stepping up? 
Thanks, Diana. So this past year was tough on everyone. Um, but when you say most impacted women, definitely rise to the top as we think about the, the amount of job loss that happened this past year. Um, so as we were looking at uh, that, and we just celebrated Women's History Month, um, our leadership team took an active role in coming up with a solution. So we announced at the beginning of Women's History Month, the Women's Collab, which is a new initiative that Verizon is starting. And, you know, we have the opportunity at Verizon to um, have a company that really champions our careers, but we know that outside of our four walls that that's not the case for everyone. So the CoLab, what that's meant to do is to per, um, create a site um, where everyone, um, women everywhere can access free content um, that's designed for women, whether it's the great training that our learning and development team provides um, for programs like WOW, um, whether it's um, platforms that we have like Makers and Up to Speed and Next 20 that are constantly um, releasing new content um, that designed to support women. There's something in there for everyone. And so we want everyone to have access to it. Well, I'm so excited to see what that's all about. Marie, thank you so much for joining us today. And, you know, it wasn't just women that were hard hit during the pandemic. Our customers have been through so much. But our retail team was with them every step of the way, keeping those doors open, keeping that personal interaction going at a time when they needed to be connected the most. And so for that, I'm going to turn to Teresa Fox. She's a solutions manager in New Tampa, Florida. And Teresa, you... You guys have been through a lot. Can you tell me a little bit about how the last several months have been? Yeah, it's it's definitely been challenging. You know, there's a lot put on the stores. Um, you know, we have to stay with protocol, making sure we're not, you know, exceeding capacity, cleaning, sanitizing, wearing our masks, making sure customers are doing all the same thing. But our customers really need us now more than ever. So, and, you know, it's just really important that we all, you know, handle this and and, and take care of them. There was a letter that came in to us about your team, you in particular, from a customer. And I just need to read a little bit of it. She says, my visit to the new Tampa store was on one of my emotional days as I'm battling the uncertainty of cancer. My phone was damaged beyond repair and its value as my primary source of communication and the storage safety of all its memories was of the utmost importance. Stepping into the store holding back tears, mask tightly across my face, the manager recognized the needs of a stranger. Knowing her staff well, I was paired with Samuel and his professionalism, product knowledge, soft hand to humor, patience, and kind approach reassured me I was in good hands. And when it was all said and done, every worry was lifted off my shoulders. Teresa, when you hear something like that, what does it make you feel? And, and what does that say about our retail teams in general? I mean, it's, it's definitely rewarding. We were really, really busy that day, but we try not to handle, um, you know, any customer different than the other. So, I mean, our customers, like I said before, they need us now more than ever. It's that connectivity that we, you know, we all do so many things on our devices, you know, from school to work, keeping in touch, not being able to see, you know, our loved ones. So, you know, that's that's the most important thing is to just make sure that we can keep our customers connected. And, um, you know, and that's that's just what we did. That's what we have to do. And you did it so well. So we just want to shout you out, Teresa, Samuel, your solutions specialist, and the rest of the new Tampa store, as well as the entire retail team for taking care of business, taking care of our customers with an emphasis on care. And I want to thank the four of you for coming to talk to me today about how we took care of business and how we will continue to take care of business in the future. Thanks so much. Thank you, Diana. Thanks, Diana. Thanks, Diana. A big thanks to Diana and the panel there for, yes, taking care of business as all of us are doing as we think about our results uh, and the months and the year ahead here. Uh, so uh, we've come to uh, the portion of our webcast that I love, and of course, it's uh, recognition. When you take care of business, it's great to be recognized. With that, we have a very special uh, Credo uh, recognition location. We're going to head on over to Long Island, I believe, and check in with uh, Yoli Stancil. Hey, Yoli. Hey, Andy. So we're excited to be here. I'm joined with a few of our amazing V-teamers here at the Holbrook Garage. And before we jump to recognition, I want to play a quick game with our V-teamers. So everybody, please raise your hand. Now, if you customers say that you provide an exceptional customer experience, please keep your hand raised. Everybody's hand should be up. 
If, <laughs> if you have greater than 20 years of business, greater than 20 years in the company, please keep your hand raised. If you served in the military, please keep your hand raised. That took me out. Now, if you recently went into a burning building and saved five individuals, please keep your hand up. I'm guessing that unless your name is Nick Jessa, your hand is down. So I'm going to ask Nick to please come up with me. Right. As we present him with this quarter's Credo Award, Nick, you exemplify the Credo with your actions and also with your words. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. OK, Andy, I've always wanted to say this. And now you're up to speed. Oh, Over to you, Hans. There we go. That, now, that's a way to present the credo. Uh, one more time for Nick there and Yoli uh, at our garage there. Um, that's a way to present, huh? Yeah, yeah, my hand went up, you know, but only on the first question, and I had to take it down. Uh, as soon as you were saying more than 20 years, OK, sorry. Uh, but no, what an amazing story, uh, Nick, uh, what he has been doing, and uh, not only uh, rescuing people on the, the line of duty, but also carrying out the work of <laughs> installation and just continue as a V-team we should do to give a, a, a fantastic service. I, I, no, no, you, you're, you're amazed of, of the group of V-teamers we have that are so dedicated and thinking about the customers. So, yeah, a big shout out. I, I wish I can keep my hand up for the three questions next time. Uh, you never know, but uh, at least I, I hanged in for the hey, first one. There, there's always the next earnings yeah, exactly. results. Exactly, it's the podcast, next earnings. Right? You're going to see if I can. But can really, cope that. hats off, of course, uh, to Nick and yeah. 20, you know, 25 years uh, and, and the humility yeah. that our V teamers show every day. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, so our thanks, of course, to Yoli and the team, and congratulations to Nick. And uh, with that, let's, let's head on over to uh, Q&A here. And uh, yes, uh, so many of you have uh, gone to Slido.com, used the keyword Verizon, put those questions in. You've all also come in and, and liked a lot of the questions as well. Uh, this first question, though, I think we're going to start. And yes, I'm, I'm looking at this live with all of you, so we don't really know what the next questions are. So this is kind of what's <laughs> kind of like cool that. about this. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So. The first question, we're going to, let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, well, this is a VCG qu question. So on the consumer side, we have a question here from Alan uh, for Ronan. We had an aggressive promotion that started April 1st. Is there anything you can tell us about how this is going? This promotion, of course, uh, really um, everybody was talking about, was, was very successful. And uh, Ronan happens to be joining us uh, from a store in New Jersey. Ronan, it's good to see you. And... Uh, Take a look at that question and let us know what you think about the, the, the promo there. So thanks, Andy, and, and thanks for the question. Let me just start by uh, thanking Hans for his comments just at the, at the top of the show. Very important for all of us. And, you know, our retail team are in the front line every single day, and it's great to see us back open for business as we have been across March. And a special shout-out to Yoli and the team for an amazing quarter in Fias. Thank you again for that. So, yes, we came out strong uh, in the quarter, and uh, what we're doing is we're focusing on things that matter to customers. We're focusing on addressing the wrongs. And so we went out with a very strong uh, promotion that gave value both to new but also to our existing customers and very explicitly highlighted the fact that the challenge that very often customers have is they'd love to do that upgrade, but they don't have a qualifying device because they've cracked the screen or they've got it's not turning on. So we wanted to make sure that everybody could participate and recognize the value in the opportunity for people to go to 5G. So look, I'm really excited about uh, the promotion in, in Q4, but really it's about the underlying message, which is better on and better with Verizon. And we need to show up every single day and prove that to be the case. So thanks for the question, Andy. Thank you, Ronan. And, and just to let you know, uh, Hans is figuring out more and more ways to take socially distant, safe selfies with you uh, <laughs> through the screen. Uh, so uh, you'll probably see that on a social media handle uh, near you uh, there. But Ronan, I, I want to I keep you... Uh, I want to keep you there for a second with a follow-up question. This is from Ranveer. Um, a sizable reduction, um, about 177,000 in post-pay wireless net ads in the 1Q uh, 2021. Is this due to T-Mobile's endearing offers? How do we ensure these lost net ads are gained back, Ronan, with that follow-up? 
So uh, a great question. And look, we need to focus on what we deliver for our customers. But let me tell you, um, even more customers came from T-Mobile to Verizon in the first quarter of 2021 than did in 2020. So rest assured, we're demonstrating our value every single day. What we have seen is a challenge in the market from AT&T positioning with a very, very strong investment in customer um, and talking about the customer's loyalty being rewarded. Our response to that has to be to deliver not just great promo, but great customer experience every single day. And that's why our MPS is such an important part of our equation. We've always been happy to compete. What we need to make sure is that customers get the value of being with as well as being on Verizon. Our mix and match resonates. You know, one of the reasons why we're seeing such strong performance in, in Fios as we run into the opportunities of fixed wireless access with C-band is customers are understanding how we're redefining what value is. And that's quality, choice, and experience. And our commitment is we'll continue to do that and make sure that our customers are shown the love, Andy, because that's what really, really matters. And it's going to get better and better with 5G. Kyle and his team are doing such an amazing job, as Hans said at the top of the show. You know, GNNT are absolute rock stars, and we're going to kill it in 5G. Absolutely, and it's good to see that our doors are open. We're ready for our customers. It's, it's awesome, Ronan. Thank you so much, uh, Ronan, once again, joining us uh, from our, one of our stores here in New Jersey. Uh, this second question we're going to send over to Christy, uh, and uh, I really I, I love this question. This is really um, uh, this guy, this Andy guy uh, on Slido. This is really astute uh, observation here for you, Christy. As we get ready for Work Forward, uh, I happen to be wearing this shirt, too, just like Andy. Um, as we get ready for work forward, what can V-teamers expect in this new way of working? Uh, how does the vaccine rollout uh, play a role in when employees expect to go back to an office or another work location? Of course, uh, uh, myself and 3,000 of my V-team friends are, are, are wearing these shirts proudly here. And, and, and on behalf of uh, the Work Forward pilot uh, teammates, uh, Christy, we ask that question over to you. It's good to see you, Christy. It's awesome to see you too. And Andy, I wore my Citizen Verizon shirt in honor of National Volunteer Week, ah. knowing that hopefully a few of my colleagues would have their Work Forward shirt on. So I'm glad we've got all our bases covered. So excited and thankful for the 3,300 people in the pilot. Um, great to see Yoli and the frontline teams and our retail teams that were on the panel. I think I'll start with the second part. What are the implications for the vaccine rollout? We are really actively encouraging everyone in the V team to get vaccinated. Our COVID webpage has information for where you can register or sign up based on where you live. So uh, first, and also Verizon is playing a role actively in society through the work with Citizen Verizon and Diego and the marketing team promoting the benefits of getting vaccinated around the world and, and here in, in the United States. I think that's really important. Second, uh, because we're still at low penetration rates, the United States is just a little north of 20 percent. Lots of Europe is around 5 percent of their society have been vaccinated fully. The CDC hasn't really changed their workplace guidelines yet for mask wearing and social distancing and the like. So our expectations of, you know, customer and employee behavior in our premises is still remains the same. But we're monitoring very closely and we do expect at some point Later this year, the CDC will update their guidelines. And then finally, with the Work Forward pilots, we are uh, working with 50 teams. We're surveying them every other week, and we're building up microsites and tools to codify everything we learned during COVID so that as we reopen our administrative offices and we begin to have our teams coming back in the offices, we're leveraging everything we learned about distributed teams and folks working from home offices or people working across all of our Verizon sites and the way we've built the teams and the fabric of that over the last year, we don't want to lose. So lots more to come, and I can't wait to be sharing the results of the pilot throughout the second quarter, Andy. Looking forward to it, Christy. Thank you very much, and really proud to be a part uh, of the Work Forward team. Uh, looking forward to learning more uh, and really just being here in Basking Ridge. There, there's, a, there's a palpable energy that you feel uh, coming in here, seeing your colleagues, and hopefully more of that uh, to come. So, Christy, thank you very much. And, yes, we will be talking about Citizen Verizon because I did see a question in there about it. But first, I want to get to uh, our GNNT rock star 
Kyle, <laughs> I, think, I think I surprised him a little bit there. Uh, so we have a question here from uh, Nicole. Uh, there was a lot to take in during the investor relations event. At a real top level, how will we build out our new C-band spectrum and when will our customers start seeing the benefits it provides, Kyle? Oh, uh, that's, it's actually a very good question because we talk a lot in technical mumbo jumbo a lot. <laughs> and uh, so this is an easier way to think. Here's the way I would think about it. Our C-band, what we're doing is we're leveraging all the work we've done over the past like 30 years. So we're really using all of the infrastructure and towers that you see, and we're basically remodeling it. So I think of it if you're, you know, you're working on a home, you're kind of remodeling your kitchen a little bit to get some more utility out of it, as opposed to building a brand new home, which we kind of are with millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is special technology, and you need to put fiber in, you need small cells, a little bit different tech, so that's a little harder to build, but we continue to do that well uh, also. So, uh, but both of them are fantastic, and that's how we're gonna be able to go quickly on C-band, however. So uh, you will be seeing it, hopefully we'll turn it up at the end of this year or the beginning of next. A lot of it has to do with the speed in which uh, the FCC uh, checks all their boxes and then gives us the, um, you know, the ability to start uh, lighting it up and using it for our customers. But the minute they give us that go-ahead, we will be in position to turn it up. Excellent. As someone who has recently uh, redone the kitchen, uh, it's a great feeling. It really is. <laughs> uh, and, and Hans, making that connection, you know, from the, the C-band mumbo jumbo, uh, yeah. Mr. Mumbo Mulaney's jumbo, words, yeah. uh, to the customer translation, uh, how do you feel about making that very strong connection there? No, it's a super strong connection because uh, ultimately, as uh, we have also explained, this has been a long journey for us to prepare not only the infrastructure, but the devices that is already out there. So as soon as we can commercially turn this off, we, there's some cleaning up on the C-band spectrum, for example. There's going to be millions of our customers that are going to enjoy the C-band immediately. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's how we work. And, and I also want to add today, I mean, yesterday was an announcement uh, of uh, the new iPad, which will have millimeter wave. I know that Tammy and the team are working with that. And, and, uh, because ultimately, we have worked with the ecosystem from the beginning. So we not only have the, the technology, the devices, but also offerings with our partners. And I. I and that's why you see millimeter wave into the phones, into the pads, and all of that. So that's how our consumer is going to get it. It's not like, hey, we're going to turn something on, and nobody can use it. This is how we work in a partnership from all the way from devices, technology, and the commercial. And that's, that, that, that's a just unique for Verizon. That's how we always work. And I usually remind people when they ask, we started with millimeter, tw millimeter wave 2015, I think, when nobody even believed it could work. Uh, today is the fastest 5G in the world by far. I mean, we are winning all those awards. And uh, we're just amplifying it. And this year, it's going to be 30,000 sites on millimeter wave in the three years where we've been working. So it's, it's just a machine we have. We just need to continue that operation. Excellent. It's amazing. And, and the Eureka moments for yeah. our customers, yes. it's great to see. We oh, see yeah. it all the time. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you mentioned Tammy, because we've seen it in the, in the business space here. We have a question here from Anil. We recently won a contract with Hampton Port in UK for private 5G. What is the difference between public 5G and private 5G product <laughs> offerings, Tammy? Yeah, so first of all, really excited about that win and the world is paying attention because it is actually our first private network deployment on 5G and it's really exciting to see the EMEA team be able to do that. Um, you know, one of the things we've talked about, Kyle's team being a rock star team, one of the things I love about the work they're doing is they're not only building C-band, but they're doing everything else it said they were gonna do and they've built mobile edge compute for us as we think about how do we serve our customers. You know, our customers coming back post COVID need transformation tools more than they've ever needed them before. And we have never, never been better positioned to meet the needs of customers from a mobility standpoint, from a broadband standpoint, and now from a mobile edge compute. And specifically, we can do edge compute via our partner at AWS and the work we're doing there on public, which allows a million developers worldwide to develop applications and solutions in the public edge compute that's on our network in the 10 sites. And Kyle's going to give me another 10 uh, this year. So we'll have 20 site locations in public, which is really exciting because we're the only one 
out there today doing that. Uh, and then when you look at private mech, which is the ability to put edge compute on the customer's premise, keep their information there, have the power of edge compute on the 5G network. We're seeing a lot of complementary 5G private network builds as well. So, you know, there's so much we can do here, public or private. We announced a couple weeks ago our partnership with AWS and now rolling out private as well. We also have that partnership in place with Azure. So we're giving customers choice as they accelerate their digital transformation. And quite frankly, as we build out the 21st century infrastructure for our customers, mobility, broadband, and cloud capability. So it's an exciting time as we win today and build for tomorrow. That's right, you, you can see, oh, there's the, the fist bump right there. Two rock stars, Kyle and Tammy, <laughs> and you can see that snowball effect, yeah. the, the, just people coming to us and saying, we wanna be a part of this, it's, it's really awesome. Uh, I promised a Citizen Verizon question uh, that Christy uh, mentioned uh, representing the shirt there, so we'll send this one over to Diego. Uh, and this is uh, from Donna here. We are closing in on the one year anniversary of Citizen Verizon. In a time when society has needed our support like never before, what does it mean to be a responsible business? How do we set ourselves apart from other companies? That question is for you, Mr. Scotty, and it's good to be with you, sir. It's good to see you, good to be here. Thanks for the, uh, for the question, and, uh, and first of all, uh, congratulations to everybody in the company, every single employee and team that is making Citizen Verizon really matter in the lives of so many people, both inside and outside uh, the company. Uh, why does it matter to be a responsible business? Well, first of all, uh, in this day and age, uh, what we all see is that the expectations about companies that are doing business has gone up. Um, you know, Hans was just talking about the ESG report that came out early this week. But most importantly also is, you know, our two equities, trust and innovation. You can create trust in that context that I was describing before if you don't behave like a responsible business. It used to be that just doing uh, philanthropy was enough. And uh, in this day and age, that is not enough. What you need to do in order to stand out and succeed in this area uh, is to put uh, that responsibility, behaving like a responsible business, uh, not as what you do on the side with, with uh, uh, you know, your support for society, but what you do every day uh, as part of your strategy. That's why uh, we've committed to these three big pillars for Citizen Verizon, which are uh, digital inclusion, uh, climate protection, and then human prosperity. And you know what I think is the most exciting thing of all of this work in the last year is that we're getting uh, more focused every day. And I tell you, for example, on digital divide, this hasn't been more uh, relevant uh, I mean, the last year, given the pandemic. So everything that we've done uh, from the philanthropic work or programmatic work with um, Verizon Innovative Learning uh, to how we've supported school districts uh, from a, um, a public sector standpoint, everything has been about with this, uh, this filter of how do we do a business in a responsible way. And we're just starting. Uh, but again, it's part of the brand, it's part of our strategy, it's part of our business. That's what it's all about, Diego. Thank you. And I see you're sporting the same shirt as I am. Christie's rocking the Citizen Verizon shirt. It's like a jersey swap uh, at the game there. It's very cool. Uh, so good to see you, Diego. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to show Verizon Media uh, some love uh, because uh, we've got some questions here. So we, we, got, we got Guru here uh, in the uh, Basking Ridge uh, audience. Uh, we've got a question here from Bennett. Uh, VMG enjoyed another quarter of year-over-year -year growth. That is quite the turnaround. What's the secret sauce, Guru? Oh, I think that's a good Great question. I'm, I'm looking forward oh, to hearing oh, yeah. the answer. <laughs> Inquiring uh, minds want to know. Uh, first, I, I do want to echo what um, Han said up front and yesterday's verdict. I think it, it, it is a mini milestone, I would say, but there is so much more to do. Uh, and I'm proud of what we as Verizon are doing. But this is a long journey, and I'm sending all the love to uh, the black community and all the employees we have, and broadly what we'll do. I think we'll, we have to keep marching. So, and, and I, as I said, proud again about how Hans and we all are leading in there. Uh, in terms of what's the secret, uh, I think first of all, congratulations to the entire Verizon family and V-teamers for a great quarter. Uh, I think I take that into VMG. First of all is the team. I think all the 10,000 uh, plus builders, we teamers, we 
have in Verizon Media day in, day out. I mean, it's, uh, it's been a two and a half year plus journey when you think about 2.0. I think we've shown up every day and executed every day to show the results. We had that in Q4, coming back and doing this again in Q1. Uh, it goes to each one of them for executing. Underneath that, I would call our three big buckets. One, our owned and operated products. A lot of you use that. Take finance, sports, news, or any of the verticals that we have. A lot of good progress on engagement. It's the first time actually owned and operated grew bigger than our 3P in terms of overall engagement and what we're seeing in revenue. Uh, also driven by subscriptions and e-commerce, betting. I think you saw in the video up front about how many betters we've added uh, in the first quarter. The second big bucket is ads. Ads platform has been really driving for many, many months, uh, consistent growth. Our demand side platform, what we're doing on digital out of home, connected TV, all of these things are killing it in terms of the growth we are showing. And then also led by partnerships. So really driving everything we're doing on ads. And the third bucket I'd call search is really continue to stabilize both on volume, which we are getting in third, third party. So net of it, all call it cylinders of the business really firing really well. And now we are to keep that consistently and keep doing in Q2 and beyond. But uh, the secret sauce is the team. That's Back wonderful. to you, Andy. Congratulations to you and the team, Guru. Uh, was that a satisfactory answer, Mr. Vesper? Yeah, it was pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. I, and I agree. As I said in the beginning, uh, I think both VMG and, and VBG are doing dramatic transformation and changing the platforms to be more scalable. I, I also have to say that VCG is doing that as well, but they had a little bit less of that compared to the other units. Uh, and, and you start to see in the, the fruits of that work in both these areas, and that's how we work. We have a plan, we execute, as we heard Kyle talking about. We plan for years and we execute, and we can never lose that. And some people remember this. Fantastic slide we did in Verizon 2.0, you know, with preserve, strengthen, and transform. I think the first pillar, or I know the first pillar, we had operation excellence as one of the most important things that we needed to preserve. That's what you hear from both VBG, VCG, and, v, and VBG, whatever V we have, and that, of course <laughs> NNT. All of them are doing it, and, and uh, uh, it's many V here. So. Uh, I, 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 I'm proud of the team. I'm proud of the, that uh, the strategy we laid out is working. Our customers liking it. Um, um, the, the financials are going in the right direction. Our, our employees are, are, are behind us. We continue to work together. And finally, the, what we're doing in the society, you heard with Diego, and all hangs together in the strategy for me. It's not uh, different disparate movements here. Everything hangs together. That's wonderful. And, and really, whatever V it is, the, the, the letter to think about is W, because we are winning. We are absolutely winning yeah. in all facets. V, yeah, there. yeah. V. Sorry for the cheesy, uh, for the cheesy like letter uh, connection there. Yes. Well, V is investment. Yeah, I, I guess we'll stick with the V then. Yeah, we'll yeah, stick yeah. with the V. Um, let's go to Craig now, uh, because uh, Mr. Silliman is here uh, as well, and it's good to be with you, sir. Um, so, uh, you know, this, um, and I want to just acknowledge that Throughout all of this, all of our leaders, and I'm sure our teammates, are thinking about what's happening, what's happened yesterday, and just wanted to get your thoughts on that and, and how we've created the kind of culture that you know, really thinks about healing and moving forward. And really, it's, it's built into our purpose, forward together, and that's how we continue to move. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think the, um, the word you use there that's important is, is together, and I, I love what Guru said when he was asked about the secret sauce and that it was team. And you know, ultimately, I think what characterizes us as a, as a company is that constant embrace of diversity and inclusion. And you know, part of diversity is a whole realm of different types of diversity. We come from different gender backgrounds, different uh, racial backgrounds, different religious backgrounds. We have different opinions as well. And that's important, and we need to recognize that and respect that. But then come together, you know, respect the differences, but embrace what we have in common as humans, as V-teamers. We have done such amazing things. We've talked about the results. Matt always comes back to results matter. And the reason we produce results is because we come together and do it together, right? The, the really incredible thing about being part of a company like Verizon is what we do could not be done by any one person, 10 people, 100 people. It is only thousands of people coming together with a common purpose that you can deliver the types of networks that we deliver. So I think what we need to do here is recognize that a lot of different people feel strongly about a lot of different things going on in society right now. And it's important to respect each other's opinions. But at the end of the day, as V-teamers, we come together and we embrace 
our teamwork, our togetherness, and work together as a team to continue to deliver results for society. So thanks for the question, Andy. Craig, thank you very much. Uh, and, and really the compassion that you and, and our entire uh, leadership uh, show on a day-to-day -day basis is, is truly one that uh, ho you know, all of us feel. So thank you so much uh, for that. Um, you know, we, we've gone through a lot of questions. I know we're getting close to uh, wrapping things up. So I do want to uh, head on over uh, to Hans and uh, really uh, talk about, I mean, we've talked about so much, but it's, it starts and ends with growth. As you mentioned, and uh, and uh, well, I guess it starts and ends with Vesper, right? V? <laughs> no, no, Verizon. I guess <laughs> is the word. Uh, I, I, I think I said in the beginning. Sometimes you don't realize how many things we're doing in a quarter, and how many uh, courageous V teamers we have doing different things in a company, spanning all the way from technology to businesses to corporate uh, uh, every day to see that this company is moving forward and. And I talked to Kyle this morning and I said that I only see the tip of the iceberg and I think it's a lot. Uh, then you realize how much we're doing as a company and how many people are involved coming to work every day uh, in the field or working from home, wherever they are, to contribute to the V team with the values that we have. And my conviction over the last uh, 10 years uh, as a leader for large corporations is that is more important than so much else that you have that conviction. And as Craig talked about, you, you're connected, you're respected, you're part of something. Uh, and that's the emphasis on employees that we've had the last couple of years. Uh, uh, and we have more to do. But uh, I think we're off to a good start, as we say. Uh, like we're say, Matt saying about the first quarter, we're off to a good start. Three, three more to go. So, I think that's my reflection over today. I'm, I'm humble over everything we're doing and execution. The only ask I have is, of course, two things. One, remember COVID is not over. Uh, regardless where you are in the world, which uh, country you're into, we, we still have facing severe uh, issues with COVID. And, um, and uh, I, I, I just ask you to be, take, be very cautious. And that, of course, goes to our field force as well, that goes to the field every day and, and serve our customers in a fantastic way. So that, that's one. The other is that, which I, end, that which I ended with, was the preserve thing about Operation Excellence. I think we know what we need to do this year. We have outlined all the targets. We have connected it with our SDIs. We have our balanced scorecard. We have, we have targets for all the stakeholders. We have all of that boiled down to the lowest level. So we know what to do. And it's up to us now to execute and see that's happening. So uh, I'm encouraged what I've seen in the first quarter on everything we're doing. And uh, uh, we're, we're now in the middle of the April. So uh, we, we are in the second quarter already. So there's a lot to do. And uh, uh, that's what I think we should continue to do. And I thank all the V-teamers uh, for the dedication, the work, and standing up for the core values in everything we're doing, because that uh, makes a difference. It's a wonderful day to be proud to be a V-teamer every day. And of course, I know this isn't a dinner table, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say at the dinner table, too. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and I think the dinner table is, is clearly, I would start with growth, growth, growth. That's, that could work for hours, depending on which unit you're working for. The second would say that is actually our strategy is working. The strategy we have laid out with Verizon 2.0, the go-to-market, the network of service, the multi-purpose network, and, uh, and scaling our platform is actually working. And finally, I think you should talk about the things we stand for and respect uh, what Craig talked about and what Diego talked about. Those three things are, yeah, that's a long dinner. <laughs> I like big four course, five course meals. Exactly. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward yeah, uh, to yeah, that, yeah. that next dinner. Hans, thank you very much. Uh, and of course, thank you uh, to our leaders here. And yes, it is, uh, it is dinner table time. And hopefully one day, uh, you know, that our little mini virtual socially distanced table will continue to grow and we get back together uh, and we uh, continue moving forward together. So with that, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, and as we uh, conclude with our Credo video, really let's truly think about uh, what we believe in and how we truly move forward together. Have a good one. We believe. We believe in the power of technology and connections and experiences. We believe that even in the face of adversity, we have a responsibility. And so every day we wake up 
And we ask ourselves, how do we move forward? We move forward by focusing outward, not inward. Making it easy for our customers by listening, anticipating, responding. By keeping our commitments to ourselves and to them. We move forward by embracing diversity, by seeing change as an opportunity, because change energizes us. We move forward by working hard, taking action, taking personal accountability for getting things done, and always running to that crisis. We move forward the same way we always have, by believing in values that we all share. That is our credo. More important now than ever, it's how we will always move forward together.